Mark Willie is with a company called Voltaic, and my understanding, Mark, is that your expertise is you can sort of assess the health of cells before they go into the battery, yeah. during that, and afterwards, right? Yeah, really our, the forte of our software is really to take the electrochemical data, bring it up into a, a cloud system, and then understand the qual basically the quality of that battery as it comes out of manufacturing. And not just that at the end of line when you're making the actual battery, but to tie it to the upstream process so we can understand, okay, when this battery is bad, coming out of the production process, what upstream caused that? It's one of the critical things to improve uh, the yield at these factories, which right now is obviously not as good as some of the other industries. I talk a lot about in my other career is in semiconductor and the yields are very high. And one of the reasons they're so high is because you're able to tie the, the full data stream upstream and then also into the end application. So you're a feedback loop back into manufacturing. Correct, yeah, you can think of us as a, again, a quality control system that you actually take the, um, the electrochemical data and you see if the battery is good or bad and then you tie it upstream. So you can see where, you know, is, did it fail? If it failed, then I know what part of the upstream process caused the failure. So what else can you do? Because I would imagine when people go to buy used EVs, yep. they're going to want to know, is the battery good or am I going to be facing a big bill on this? Right, so one of the things you can do, if you have all that information uh, up until when you manufacture the battery, you have all the materials, all the process information, you can then take all that information, all that data, and you can tie it into the packs that are being used inside the cars. Or it doesn't even have to be a car, it, has, it can be any other kind of OEM uh, application. So then the OEM uh, person supplying the actual packs can then go and say, oh, I have all this information about the pack, and then into, inside the pack, they have all the information about the cell and all the upstream manufacturing information. So what is it, when you look at these cells, what are you looking for that's going to give you an idea that, hey, this isn't good? Yeah, I mean, so again, the electrochemical test at the end is really the this formation step. Actually, we'll start with the formation step. When you make a battery, you actually form the electrodes. That's like actually putting the life into the battery. And when you form the battery, there's actually a lot of electrochemical signals, voltage and current that come off that, where you can tell the different signals, depending on where they are with the voltage, um, the voltage profiles, you can tell, okay, is this a problem with the anode? Is this a problem with the cathode? You can actually also do uh, testing after the formation, which actually does even more advanced analysis and, and understanding of, okay, is this a, is this something with the separator that's a problem? So the formation, the, what we call, uh, yeah, the, the post-formation testing, use all that information to actually understand the issue in the, in the cell. And if you understand the problem in the cell, then you actually can understand the problems when you get into the pack side as well. Very interesting. So, looking at the bigger picture here, this, the show, are you learning anything? Have you had a chance to, to walk around? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to a lot of our customers, understanding kind of what they're doing. As you can see, there's a lot of people here. Uh, the battery industry is blowing up, um, but as it blows up, there's a lot of ramp to manufacture, and there's a lot of challenges with that. Each of our com uh, customers, if you go out and talk to them, um, they're using our system to be able to understand those challenges, and especially with uh, materials producers or cell producers, whether you're doing either of those things, they're really trying to understand in their supply chain or in their production where are those problems happening. They're all going through production hell. Is it just the nature of the business that that's happening, or they need tools like yours to figure out how to smooth out those wrinkles? Yeah, and it, uh, I think it's it's the nature of the beast. Although we should always be using best practices when we actually ramp manufacturing. This is not the first time that uh, an industry in the United States has ramped manufacturing. We had semiconductor, we had oil and gas. There's a lot of knowledge in complementary markets that actually allow for you to ramp faster. And I think the key is, is for the battery industry and for the auto industry to actually go and look at these other areas that have done this before and utilize those best practices. Um, that's in terms of process control, that's in terms of supply chain management. Again, there, there are all these areas that it's almost being ignored. I wouldn't say ignored, but just we've already done this before. And so why reinvent the wheel again? Let's make sure we get the people that are already in the United States, maybe not in the battery field, actually taking that information and feeding it up to the battery industry. So what you're saying is look in other fields uh, and areas of expertise you got it. To, to improve 
getting battery plants up to speed. Yeah, if we look back, I just was taught, I just gave a webinar recently on the semiconductor industry. Uh, it's where my where I came out of grad school. That's where I ended up. And you look at the semiconductor industry in the '80s. We had this whole. Um, basically the same kind of global competition with Japan that we're in right now, where the semiconductor industry for memory uh, and, and for logic chips was actually down in the dumps compared to a lot of the stuff that was going on in Japan. And how did we come back for that? Well, we did a lot of things. One thing we did is we uh, took a lot of the uh, ingenuity in the, in, in the scientists in America and we stopped putting it only in research and development. We actually put it into process development, so improving the processes for manufacturing. We had government policy that came in and helped us um, make sure that uh, foreign uh, governments can dump prices on uh, incoming materials. So all these things, uh, I guess the main point here is there's all these things that have happened in previous industries that we just need to go back and look on and understand so we can actually ramp the battery uh, industry better. Well, what you're saying is fascinating to me because there's so much focus on improving chemistry, improving anodes and cathodes and all that. And you're saying we need to put more into process development, Correct. process R&D. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly where you got to put it right now. Uh, if you look at batteries right now, obviously there's a lot of development work that needs to, or research work that needs to go on to make them better. They're pretty good right now. So let's take what we got right now and actually just improve the yield so that people actually, the factories can make money on them. The, the issue we have right now is safety, obviously, with batteries, and then also making it a market within the United States that we can make money on so we can bring more of the, the business onshore as opposed to having it offshore. Mark, thanks for your time, man. Very yeah. interesting stuff. No problem. Good. As experts in direct current switching and control, Shelfbau is at the front leading the charge in developing and manufacturing the necessary electromechanical components for the future. Each system and application will require conditions in which a stable connection, secure contact, and safe control of power are vitally important. These challenging conditions are what make Shelfbau qualified for this future.